Luce is finally here in Rise of Kingdom. So today we're going to go over everything that we've learned so far. And early results are showing that he looks really, really promising. And make sure you stay tuned till later in the video because I'm going to go over which commander pairings I think are the best for him and whether or not you should even invest in him. Because believe it or not, some of you watching will probably consider skipping him, even though he's actually super good. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Please excuse the fact that I look like an absolute uh, potato this is my pajamas and my bed hair I literally like just woke up and pressed record but anyway let's jump right into this okay first of all Luce is the commander that you should be picking from the anniversary event okay if you guys are trying to decide between Luce and Mulan then you have not been paying attention okay Luce is a million times better than Mulan so no question there this is absolutely the commander that you should be getting for free and you should probably hold off on investing in him because obviously we know that he will be the wheel of fortune commander i don't suspect that you're gonna have to wait that much longer to get your hands on more sculptures of him so should you be maxing him today for a kvk that's happening this week probably not okay you probably want to wait a little bit unless you like literally have no infantry commanders then maybe but i would say hold off to the wheel of fortune get your value out of that wheel but some crazy people have actually expertise him already so that way we can start to test things out and huge shout out to everyone who's already done that because well that's helped me make this video now there's a couple of things that we were kind of waiting for luce to come into the game before we could actually test and that's what we're going to cover here today now one of the things that i was most concerned about was the odd debuff stacks on Sargon's second skill. Okay. I think at first glance, everybody thought, okay, Sargon with Luce is going to be a broken combination. And just to give you guys a little bit of foreshadowing, yes, this is an insane combination. We're going to talk about this later in the video, but there is one huge caveat here. And that is that odd debuffs are spread with skill damage and Luce's active skill does not deal skill damage in AOE fashion. So in case you guys you know didn't know the aoe skill damage on any other commander will inflict this odd debuff so for example if you have cpo prime primary with uh sargon secondary or i guess in reality you would probably flip them around but you would do the aoe skill damage from cpo would inflict the odd debuff from sargon on all of the targets that were hit by this aoe that is not the case for luce okay i actually did a little barbarian testing i hit this level 25 barbarian and then the aoe from luce actually struck the level 21 barbarian over here and in the battle log you can see that the skill is started by the glory of shizong okay uh turn two there is uh nothing here that states that there's odd debuffs there is no odd debuffs on this turn either and in fact the target only first gets odd debuffs from the expertise from sargon so there is no odd debuffs that are spread by the active skill from luce however there's still insane synergy with sargon that we're going to talk about later in the video but it is important to know that you you do miss out on that little bit of synergy but i think the pairing is so good that you actually don't even care that you're losing out on that synergy now the other thing that we know is that the smite damage from luce his active skill and also the instant proc uh smite damage that he does on his third skill ignores some really popular talents okay if you take a look at the uh, support tree for example you'll see things like emergency protection you'll also th see things like loose formation okay these are really popular talents that reduce the skill damage that you take these are not affected by the smite damage from luce also for example Boudicca's third skill reduces skill damage taken by 25 percent while on the map well great news smite damage is not skill damage in these calculations so that is something that is really really good to know this basically goes against the grain of the entire meta that players have been building for the past five years in rise of kingdoms everybody has been optimizing for increased skill damage that you deal and reducing the skill damage that you take and now this is just a completely separate category of damage basically and everybody's army that is optimized for reducing skill damage taken is actually ignored by the smite damage which is really really good the downside of course is that any bonuses to skill damage that you have do not apply to smite damage so that is unfortunate but that's also another reason why the sargon pairing has such good synergy there is no bonus to skill damage anywhere on sargon's kit here the fact that luce doesn't scale off of 
skill damage anyway is basically irrelevant for that pairing which is good but lucha is not just bringing smite damage to the mix his expertise also introduces the extra normal attack feature okay and this is something that a lot of players have been speculating about and whether or not this is going to break the game okay and this is i think equally as exciting if not potentially more exciting than smite damage itself i guess it's probably not as exciting as smite damage but i think it's really really cool and i'm happy that they've introduced another new mechanic and what's crazy about this is and again we're going to go back to sargon here the active skill on sargon essentially what this does is it applies a i guess a buff to your own army okay and after the active skill is used for the next five turns each normal attack will deal skill damage okay uh and one of the cool things about this and we found from early test results from players who have already expertise luce is that the extra normal attacks from luce you have a 25 percent chance of this occurring if they occur during sargon's active skill window you will deal additional damage factor during that time so normally you know if you stay connected with sargon for five seconds you're going to deal 2500 total damage factor across all five seconds right but if you deal an extra normal attack in that period that bumps it up from 2500 total to 3000 okay uh and i don't know if you could proc this twice in that five second window i guess yeah i guess you can there is no cooldown on here other than the fact that you can only do it once per turn but i mean yeah i guess you could get really lucky and you could actually pop off a ton of this bonus skill damage factor okay now this also means uh that we get a little bit of synergy with our boy frederick where is he here he is um this is kind of the same thing with freddy here if he's expertise especially um 800 damage factor over three seconds if you deal an extra normal attack damage it seems to be the case that you can actually deal bonus damage factor um now does that mean the frederick pairing is broken um i i don't think so uh you could try it i think that like in any case that you would use freddy you would rather use sargon anyway so i don't think that that's a serious contender although if you literally have nothing you could try it out i guess but i just thought it was funny that there's like probably some unintended synergy here that i think is interesting because i feel like nobody has talked about frederick in like literally four years so it's worth noting now the other thing we learned about extra normal attacks is from this video that was shared by wout gaming over on discord i don't know if he was the first person to test this he was the first person to see that i posted about that that had posted about this uh so quick shout out to him of course but here you could see um he posted a video over on the infantry discord perhaps other places as well and you could see that um, when sargon launches an extra normal attack he also triggers undying fury burning blood and also his active skill of course which we have already talked about and we also learn here that the extra normal attack could also trigger skills such as luce's instant rock damage here for those of you that aren't that familiar overdrawn presence is 300 smite damage it has a 25 percent chance of occurring with a five second cooldown okay but this is really big news extra normal attacks triggering talents is amazing in his video it shows that it does trigger burning blood and it does trigger undying fury okay so normally when you do a normal attack you would be gaining 18 total rage from those two uh, talents combined but now if you deal extra normal attacks it doubles that to 36. so we are going to be gaining more rage with luce as a result of his extra normal attacks now as far as i know i haven't seen anybody confirm or deny if the extra normal attacks give you more base rage for that turn right like outside of talents and things like that typically your normal attacks are where your rage comes from uh and so dealing more normal attacks uh, does that give you more rage I haven't seen anyone test or confirm that yet so if you know that comment that down below I would actually love to know and of course I don't have Lucha expertise so I can't I can't test it right now myself now because the extra normal attacks trigger additional procs of the damage factor on Sargon's active skill what this means is that Sargon's active skill does inflict more stacks of odd debuff on a single target okay so earlier we talked about the fact that luce's aoe does not spread the odd debuffs which is true but sargon will be inflicting more odd debuffs on the single target that you will be hitting okay so there's a little bit of a pro and a con here 
with this pairing and what that means is faster odd stacks on a single target means you're going to be dealing this 1000 damage factor more frequently and you're going to be gaining that shield for yourself more frequently which is really really good again the synergy here is amazing now before we talk about more commander pairs there's one last thing that I want to mention about Luce that I don't know for sure okay I haven't seen anybody confirm this yet and that is accessories okay and please comment down below I'm trying to learn alongside you guys does the extra normal attack have a chance to trigger the effects of ring of doom or horn of fury now um, again we don't know I don't know for sure maybe you guys know you can comment down below I don't know if those extra normal attacks trigger these but I almost don't really care if it does or not um like yes obviously it's better if it does trigger it because it, more chances to trigger it means it's going to trigger more often but I don't think it'll be as good as people uh, expect it to be because you still have a cooldown on ring of doom and also with the horn of fury obviously there is no cooldown here but you also still run the chance of over raging right like I, I think that there's so many ways to gain rage these days that it almost like yes it, again it is better if it triggers this right obviously but like is it is it a complete game changer that it triggers this I don't really think so I, again I, I still think you're gaining so much rage from so many places these days that double triggering the horn is like yeah it's good but you probably have so many other ways of getting rage anyway now if it does trigger effects from accessories I think the Karak's war drum will probably be the largest beneficiary of that proccing because first of all it has a lower cooldown than the ring of doom it also has a lower chance of occurring than the horn so it actually benefits from the increased probabilities or increased chances for it to occur and also because you're spreading it to more players there is a lower chance that you're giving the benefit to a player that doesn't need it aka a player who is overaging on that turn um so I think like yeah it benefits the Karak war drums a little bit more than I think it would benefit players using the Horn of Fury that's just my opinion but again this all depends on whether or not it even procs accessories or not so please again comment down below if you know for sure and please don't say oh VIP support said I I, I honestly uh, and I mean this like with the most respect possible but I just don't believe VIP support like most of the time uh I think a lot of times they they misunderstand the question they don't know for sure the the commander's not even in the game yet right so like I I know that um a lot of players are asking VIP support a lot of things and I just don't think that they always know the right answer or maybe even understand the question exactly okay so please if you know for sure from a test result then let me know 100 down below okay let's talk about some commander pairings for luce and whether or not you should even be investing in him because i did mention in the beginning of the video that a lot of players you know even though he's really good a lot of players may actually still skip him okay and why actually is that well the reason that a lot of players might consider skipping luce is because they already have the guan cpo combination okay and i know i meant i said that backwards uh but guan cpo is such a good pairing in the open field um that do you actually replace your guan with luce if you're only running one infantry army if you're only running one infantry army do you spend the sculptures on luce well that comes down to a couple of things is luce better in the open field than guan i think yes of course i think he is better than guan so i think a cpo luce combination is better than a guan cpo combination the question is how much better is it and is it better enough to justify spending sculptures on luce right because any sculpture that you spend on luce is a sculpture that you're not spending on something else it's you, you could have put that in a nevsky or a joan or a, a william or a Duga leong right like there's so many other good commanders in the game that it's like if you're gonna replace your guan in the guan cpo combo the luce has to be significantly better okay um because otherwise the opportunity cost is super high and i think for a lot of players uh you know he is better but is he that much better probably not like if you're a cavalry main or an archer main and you're running your guan cpo you're probably fine using the guan cpo unless your account is so stacked that you have no other investments to make right like if that is the only place that you can improve your five or seven army lineup then yes replace your guan with luce i think that is definitely a good strategy but again for most players they're not at that point most players don't have just an overflowing uh, abundance of uh, legendary sculptures um and if you're only running one infantry army i think the guan cbo is probably fine but if you're running two infantry armies luce is non-negotiable in my opinion i think you absolutely need luce he is probably the 
second best infantry commander in the game in my opinion at this point uh just based on what we've seen from early test results i think cpo is probably still the king because he has so much synergy with everybody and the health debuff is so good but luce is a uh, is is coming in hot okay uh he is really really quite good especially because i mean dude the march speed reduction here is good five targets is he the only five target aoe um infantry i think he actually might be he's crazy okay he's crazy so if you're running two infantry armies in rise of kingdoms the way that you would run them is guan with cpo and then you would do sargon primary luce secondary okay the synergy with sargon is unbelievable okay we've already talked about this extensively throughout the video um we've talked about how you're going to be dealing extra damage factor with the active skill on sargon you're going to be dealing extra odd debuff stacks to the target that you're hitting and therefore dealing the instant proc 1k more often the amount of red numbers you see with the sargon luce combo is insane okay obviously sometimes you're double proccing sargon's active skill but also you're instant proccing with the smite damage on uh on, on luce and you're also instant proccing with the 1k on on sargon like there's just so much damage factor that's going on here in, in the red numbers it's actually wild so that combination i think the sargon luce is almost as good as the guan cpo i i really do feel that way and like i think one of the big problems that players uh, have with sargon is that he has to stay connected to a target for five seconds well great news luce has a 40 percent march speed reduction for three seconds okay that helps out a ton now of course obviously you know if if sargon is primary then you're gonna start the active skill before you start the march speed reduction so you know they may disconnect for one turn or something like that in between it's not perfect synergy but as the battle goes on and as the battle goes longer and as you inflict more uh march speed reduction from either other nearby armies or as you stack it with this the synergy there is very very good now the other question is you know since we know that the extra normal attacks do proc other talents does it proc feral nature I do think that it can um I, I actually haven't seen it specifically in a battle report but there's nothing to suggest that it wouldn't the question is do you get feral nature uh with this combination and honestly I feel like you might not actually need it right because you're you already know that you're going to be gaining more rage just from burning blood and undying fury alone and also you might want to sacrifice these extra points here to grab snare of thorns right because this will also likely proc with the extra normal attacks from luce which means you'll have a more more chances to slow down the target okay and i think that that is going to help a lot for sargon we've talked about how important that that actually is and also if you do come up here to grab snare of thorns um I think you still grab the clarity here because this is going to increase the damage from Sargon right like obviously he deals it over time and you still have as you can see your seven points left obviously you could put one point into the health here put two points into defense you know maybe come up this way for hold the line or you could get a two point invest in feral nature right you could do two three so that's five six seven so two points in feral nature is that worth it I don't know probably not unfortunately hold the line procs after being attacked not off of your own normal attacks otherwise that would be insane yeah this is actually a really weird build uh I'm trying to like build a specific talent build just for for Sargon Luce I think yeah you, you got you got some weird talents going on here I don't know if you would maybe reduce some of the snare of thorn investment to go more in on hold the line um that's something that you guys can can decide on your own I think you probably skip the one point in defense and you probably don't want to skip any of the March speed obviously I'm sure players will play around that more in the coming days but the point is the Sargon Luce combo has insane synergy and I think it does make up for the fact that you do have to stay connected with Sargon a little bit okay it makes up for it a little bit I think that that is really nice now should you build three infantry armies I don't think so okay uh yes this does increase the the overall effectiveness of players running three infantry armies obviously but I don't think it's there unless Gorgo is broken with Luce then you okay maybe that's two commanders but I don't think people are going to really use Gorgo in the open field because she has no March speed she's kind of slow um I could be wrong I there's a lot on her kit that works in the open field so like infantry are in such a bad spot that maybe they do actually do that now the real question is uh if you're a player who does not have Guan at all right like let's say you just entered season of conquest and you focused on CPO first like pretty much everybody recommends that you do 
do you go for Guan or do you go for Luce? I think the answer is Luce, right? Uh, because, you know, one of the cool things about Guan is if you get lucky, a 5155 Guan is pretty much done. That's pretty much all that you need. So the question is, can you do a value build with Luce that is as good or better than the 5155 Guan? And I think the answer is yes. I think if you have a 5551 Luce, I think that is probably as good or better than a 5155 Guan and you can guaranteed get it that's the biggest thing with Guan you would have to use skill resets or get super lucky with Luce you can guarantee get the configuration that you want here I think that that is really really good now do you want the third skill or the fourth skill more I think these skills are pretty equivalent in effectiveness but I think the I like the fourth skill a little bit more I think it scales better right because going from one point to five points is a 5x multiplier right going from 2 to 10 whereas here you get a 4x multiplier and a 3x multiplier and also your probability of dealing with smite damage stays the same even at one and also we're talking infantry attack like you know there, there was speculation that attack would scale insane with smite damage and I think that the truth is that it just scales as good as it always has you know obviously bonuses to attack also deal more skill damage right like I don't know if players maybe don't realize that but that is how attack actually works so um there's no like at there's no additional value you get out of attack for smite damage commanders compared to regular commanders it seems to be as effective maybe slightly more so I think players were looking at the Alex combo and saying Alex Luce is going to be insane the truth is that it's like fine but it's it's definitely not your best pairing for luce so yeah yeah i would say five five one five or five 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 one it, however you want to cut it um either way both these skills are solid and i think it is probably better than a five one five five guan and here's why first of all the active skill deals more damage it's a higher damage factor than guan also guan hits three targets luce has a chance to hit five so higher damage factor hitting more targets okay it's just better right it's just better now you have a 40 percent march speed reduction which i think is is insane value you lose the silence um but i think silence right now don't get me wrong is very strong it's not as good as it was three years ago but it's still strong uh you obviously you have you know the commanders like Boudica that just shrug it off Yugliang shrugs it off right so like there's that but yes you do lose the silence that is unfortunate but I think you make up for it by the fact that you're dealing more damage and the March speed reduction is huge for infantry if you have a 5551 Luce then you're gonna have 20 percent defense and 20 percent attack whereas Guan would only have 30 percent attack so you lose a little bit of attack but you gain 20 percent defense you also gain 20 percent March speed whereas Guan only has 15 so you're actually faster than the Guan as well and your tankier because you have 20 you take 20 percent less skill damage when you're all infantry okay just straight up that's that's great now you lose the healing factor on guan which i mean nobody was investing in guan for the healing factor anyway the fact that you're more tanky from the skill damage is probably makes up for that regardless and yes you do lose the instant proc additional damage factor from guan's fourth skill which is quite good but you gain the instant proc smite damage which yes is a smaller damage factor but it triggers off of normal attacks instead of the active skill of Guan Yu uh and also smite damage isn't reduced by like you know again commanders like Boudica who take less skill damage um, that does not apply to the smite damage here so yeah I think the overall the 5551 Luce is better than the 5155 Guan so if you don't have Guan at all I would say skip him go for Luce and go for the CPO Luce combo if you're going to build like if you're in the process of building your one infantry army I think that's probably it it's probably CPO Luce I think that is the new one infantry army for those that don't already have the Guan CPO in my opinion uh, and then again if you're building two infantry armies it's guan cpo sargon luce but what other combos could you do right like let's say you don't have sargon you don't like sargon for whatever reason um again i can't stress enough i think sargon is is way it's like obviously the best pairing right if you're if you're not doing sargon you're doing cpo and if you're not doing either of these two for luce i think you just don't even get luce like i think that's how much better these two pairs or these two commanders are as a pair for luce could you do herald not really too squishy could you do Alex not really too squishy and, and let me just say like the Alex combo is fine it, it the early results are showing that it's okay but I think the Sargon pairing is just so much better that like why would you do it right like why would you do it the only time you would maybe consider it is if you're running um three infantry armies which again I don't think you should uh the Charles Martel combo is uh, it's okay um the synergy here isn't as good as you might think that it is it is quite tanky uh but I mean that's 
that's pretty much it um you would not use chook you would not use leonidas uh the pyrus is a question mark and i think that um there's very few players that could even test this for us to be honest with you most players do not have an expertise um pyrus but i think that the expertise pyrus combo could be really good now would you go out of your way to expertise pyrus for this combo probably not it would have to be insane for players to even consider doing that but i think that there is some synergy here so definitely something to keep an eye on would you do the pakal no probably not uh constantine no chuck no um Tarek, uh open field Tarek is definitely an infantry main thing to do most players are not gonna have Tarek anyway is there synergy here not really besides the fact that like Tarek just hits like a truck so i mean like yeah you could pair them together i think it would be okay but um is it definitely like should you be considering that pairing probably not again sargon is is the way to go or if you're only building one army go with cpo there's not really any uh synergy with Mehmed either um we've seen players test uh, i think chiskel actually tested this caesar combo in his live stream which wasn't great and therefore the ragnar testing probably wasn't going to be great either so yeah i would say just stick with the sargon i think that that is going to be i think these two commanders are going to be stuck together like glue unless we see again the gorgon combo in the field is broken with luce then then uh, then we'll have to revisit this video entirely i guess but guys that is everything that i wanted to cover about luce hopefully you learned something about him and hopefully you know something about him that i don't that you can comment down below so that way we continue to learn together again i'm not gonna invest in him until the wheel of fortune comes around i do have a, a nice little chunk of gems that i've been saving up a little bit for this wheel of fortune so uh, unfortunately the the egg event that came around i recently did just spend a nice chunk of gems on that so yeah perhaps i need a little bit more self-control but guys if you enjoyed this video if you made it all the way to the end i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on luce is he performing as good as you thought he would is he performing better than you thought maybe worse than you thought i would love to hear from you in the comment section below and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video we are so close to 60 000 subscribers which is actually insane so please consider doing that and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace